Truth is, I thought it mattered. I thought that money mattered. But does it bollocks? Not compared to how people matter. Welcome, Mansion and other fine folks, to the Sunday Dispatch of the Black Letter, where we contemplate thoughts worth of thinking as we try to navigate through the upside-down, topsy-turvy world we find ourselves in, seeking greener pastures on the other side, hopefully coming out healthier, wealthier, and wiser. Today we're wrapping up uh, the week. It's Friday, so we take a look at uh, uh, unemployment and numbers, which are looking quite uh, good. We're going to look at the deflation as well. Um, Japan seems to be going into deflation. Could that be happening here? Perhaps it's more of a potential than is realized. And we'll take another look at uh, Real Investment Advisors for an update there on some of their uh, information, which is quite interesting. We'll take a look at it. As you can see on the side here, the election still is ongoing in the United States. It looks like Georgia is headed to a recount, uh, Biden leading in Pennsylvania. Uh, currently, it's looking like Biden will most likely win the White House. The Senate um, looks like it will remain in the hands of the uh, Republicans. And what that seems to indicate is that the uh, stock markets are enjoying that because there's unlikely to be much agreement on big moves or big bills being passed. Uh, for example, I think their, their uh, stock market is probably reading into this that a um, bifurcated Congress, much like a bifurcated society we're having, is difficult to get anything done uh, to any great measure. And so tech companies are unlikely to be broken up or anything or investigated to any great degree, at least uh, that's my reading of what's happening in the stock market and why it's doing well currently. All right, so job growth, stronger than expected in October, unemployment rate slides to 6.9%. So obviously, that's looking very bullish. And of course, uh, my thesis here is that we're in a great depression, um, and that could be incorrect. Although I think what's happening here as we look through this is that perhaps there's a hiring for seasonal holiday shopping as Christmas is coming up. Uh, and I think post-Christmas, as I've said, early into next year, we're going to really see um, the disaster that really has been hidden from us. But of course, um, maybe I'm premature. Maybe this is actually a recovery. We will see. Non-farm payrolls increased by 638,000 in October, and the unemployment rate fell to 6.9%. Economists surveyed by Dow Jones had forecast 530,000 and 7.7% respectively. Hospitality and professional and business services showed the biggest gains, government job losses subtracted from the total. So here's the chart. As you can see, the Great Recession took a long time to recover, and yet we've recovered quite quickly. So uh, this is very surprising to me. I'm not sure and not certain that it's a, a realistic view of what's happening. Uh, I think we're in a much worse shape than we were in the Great Recession. Uh, and I think, I think perhaps uh, things are just uh, slowly unfolding, taking longer to unfold perhaps than we, we realized. Although the alternative is that I'm incorrect and uh, we're not in a great depression. This recession is very short-lived, but I'm not sure. I don't see a, a valid thesis for that argument. I think what's going to happen here is it's going to start trailing out through this and then escalate up higher again, probably maybe like devil horns or something, potentially, because I don't see why we're below the great recession unemployment rate, honestly, at this stage. It's just um, bonkers to me that that would be the case. Anyway, here we go. The jobless rate decline was positive as it came with a labor force participation rate that rose 0.3 percentage points to 61.7 percent. So arguably that is good news. Monthly job growth, of course, you can see here it is uh, diminishing. So probably uh, next month it will be even less than 638,000. Probably be positive because uh, folks will probably continue to hire into the Christmas and holiday season. But I think let's uh, watch out into the winter months of next year and potentially into the spring where things will probably start uh, unraveling uh, as we keep pulling on the thread, at least the Fed and the government does. The report comes as the U.S. this week broke the 100,000 a day barrier for new coronavirus cases that pushed a rise in hospitalizations. And of course, the market doesn't seem to be concerned about this at all. I mean, these are just bonkers numbers, 100,000 a day, uh, just madness. With Federal Reserve officials stressing the link between the virus and economic growth, the U.S. faces challenging months ahead, of course, as the hospitals start to fill up. There might have to be targeted lockdowns again in some counties, cities, etc. areas, um, because if your hospitals are overwhelmed, I'm just not sure there's going to be an appetite for the public to allow business as usual, uh, because that's going to escalate the uh, death rates, of course, if hospitals can't cope in the ICUs with the number of people that need uh, intervention. This is a long piece here from Real Investment Advice, so if you'd like to uh, look at it uh, yourself, uh, the links are in the description below as always. Macro view, the rescues are ruining capitalism. 
uh, and I don't agree with a lot of this. Um, a lot of uh, folks in the United States seem to be concerned that um, the U.S. is heading into socialism. And I think uh, what's actually happening is that people are not happy with the current uh, status quo, which is basically socialism for the rich. Uh, capitalism has not been working. It's been dysfunctional for a long time. And uh, millennials perhaps are, are seemingly leaning left. I don't think they're expecting socialism in the sense that uh, we understand it, or at least uh, Americans understand it as being some sort of a communism. I think really what's going on is a push for social democracy, much like a Western European style. And personally, I see nothing wrong with that. We sort of have that here in Canada, and it works very well, uh, especially when we have the social services and the universal health care that perhaps provide a floor for everyone to uh, achieve their best. Um, so it's a very different system. It's not pure capitalism, but it does require some uh, government uh, management of health care, for example. But that certainly is a far cry from what uh, I think Americans and uh, their historical bogeyman, uh, communism and socialism, seem to uh, think it is. Anyway, so I won't go much into that, but uh, you can have a read of that for yourself. And of course, um, you know, perhaps you have a dis disagreement or a difference of opinion, and that's, of course, fine. We talk much about the bailouts and stimulus programs related to the economic shutdown and pandemic. However, the bailouts began back in 2008 when the Federal Reserve inter intervened with the insolvency of Bear Stearns. And this is all the uh, sort of um, intervention that took place, as, uh, as you might remember. To date, the Federal Reserve and the government have pumped more than $36 trillion into the economy to keep it afloat. I say afloat rather than growing because during the last decade, economic growth was a function of population growth. Monetary interventions were successful in creating inflation in financial assets. However, during the same period, the economy grew by only 2.92 trillion. So in other words, for each dollar of economic growth since 2008, it required $12.67 of monetary stimulus. Such sounds okay until you realize it came solely from debt issuance. And of course, you can't continue to do that. And I think what we're seeing here is that um, the Fed is running out of ammo and their intervention is requiring more and more intervention and um, fiscal uh, stimulus from the government and monetary printing at much higher rates, uh, exponentially, logarithmically higher, uh, orders of magnitude really, to get very little uh, results. The results are becoming lessened while the intervention has to be escalated. The Fed's foray into policy flexibility did extend the business cycle longer than normal. However, those extensions led to higher structural budget deficits. The byproduct was increased private and public debt, artificially low interest rates, negative real yields, and inflated financial asset valuations. And you can see here, total system leverage is in the orange. It just uh, really increased uh, exponentially. And that's on the uh, left-hand side, as we can see here, it's climbing towards eight trillion if it's not there already. The S&P 500 stock price index seems to go in tandem with uh, this, at least especially lately, ever since the financial crisis when they really juiced the markets. However, these policies have all but failed to this point from crash cash for clunkers to quantitative, quantitative easing, economic prosperity has worsened. And you can see that here in the prosperity. The five-year average wage growth, for example, has been declining in the orange. Five-year real GDP growth in the gray has also been um, declining, especially since uh, sort of the 2000 after the peak tech boom. As you can see, it's really come, uh, coming off the rails. And five-year average productivity uh, increased a little bit but now has also been tanking as well, especially in this last period since the great financial crisis. These numbers are not looking particularly uh, great. The Fed's moral hazard. This is a dangerous form of denial. A growing body of research shows that constant government stimulus has been a major contributor to many of modern capitalism's most glaring ills. Easy money fuels the rise of giant firms and, along with crisis bailouts, keeps alive heavily indebted zombie firms at the expense of startups, which typically drive innovation. And, of course, we've been talking about that as well over the uh, months. Um, you know, zombie firms are really an anchor on productivity and the economy growth in uh, really in, in, in aggregate as well. So uh, there's a lot of uh, good other um, charts in here, as you can see. For example, here's the, 500, the S&P 500 earnings per share year on year growth, um, which is sort of has been having less growth. So recently, as you can see, especially since the 2000, we've had some really big a negative uh, earnings growth here as well. Uh, and this remains to be seen what uh, 2020 will end up being in 2021 as well. And we've seen this chart as well before, negative correlation now, which has never happened before between the S&P and the economy, the markets and the economy. And this one I thought was interesting as well, average economic growth by cycle 
So we used to have uh, real GDP growth um, in the agricultural era around 4%, beginning of industrialization in the uh, mid 1800s at about 4.5%. Then, of course, um, the 1907 panic and World War I, uh, real GDP growth uh, declined, in increased again, as you can see, up to about 4.25%, I would say. And then the greatest uh, generation uh, just coming off of the, um, the stock market collapse, as you can see here in the gray. It's the total, well, that's actually total debt as a percent of GDP, excuse me. But of course, here in the 19, late 20s and 30s was the a real uh, issue with the crash. And then, of course, um, this, as you can see here, basically the total debt as percent GDP escalated to increase the uh, GDP growth, right? So it happened back in the 30s as well. And of course, it uh, needed to at that time because of the great crash and all of that. Then the great generation came down again as the debt came down, but was still high at three and a half or so, three and a quarter percent. And then ever since, uh, you know, since 1980, really, the Reagan years is when I consider this uh, really having become problematic with his trickle-down Reaganomics and other nonsense. And so this is really where the debt has been escalating. And of course, the growth, GDP growth has been declining. So it's not working as well. Um, you know, we've got the first juice here in the 30s. And then since then, the same jet debt to GDP has not been offering the same uh, increase. So uh, very uh, troubling. And I think uh, we have to have some sort of a reset. And I think people keep talking about that. And it's probably going to happen uh, this decade. I think uh, we're going to be a lot of big change in the world. And we'll have to see how we end up. But I think I'm hopeful uh, because I'm always hopeful about the future. I think the future we tend towards, you know, as uh, I think it was uh, Martin Luther King Jr. said something about the, the arc of uh, human justice um, is long, but it bends towards... Uh, justice or something. I'm probably messing that whole thing up, but you get the idea. That's a valid quote. And I think the same with technology and human progress. It is long. The arc of it is long, but it uh, bends towards uh, improvement and hope, I think, in, in uh, general societies. That's my, my opinion anyway. And then deflation keeps rearing its ugly head. You know, we've been talking about all this money, monetary printing, which historically would lead to inflation. We're not really seeing that to a great degree. We've seen a little bit of it in some of the general products that are in uh, demand, uh, especially I think in, in food products, we've had some uh, um, increase in inflation there, but uh, generally it's been sort of a deflationary environment, mostly because of the money velocity, money's not moving around. But of course, technology, as we discussed, also is a deflationary lever on the economy as well. And so uh, I think perhaps we're going to have uh, perhaps some inflation uh, in the, in the perhaps in the next year or two, and then probably deflation after that, but who knows? Anyway, Japan warns of deflation, falling growth potential. The Japanese government report released Friday expressed concerns over the possibility that the country will face, will face deflationary pressure due to a lack of demand and a decline in growth potential stemming from a fall in capital expenditures. And of course, capital expenditures are important because that's how businesses grow oftentimes, either research or expanding the capital into other areas of uh, machines or plants, et cetera, et cetera, or hiring people even, I think, potentially could become, could be put under capital expenditures, although probably not, it's probably maybe hard goods. Uh, but regardless, that does help uh, increase um, some inflation as well because it means the economy is growing. And of course, the economy is not really growing very well, especially into Japan and now in the U.S. and much of the Western world because of all this intervention is barely keeping it afloat, right? The report said that the coronavirus outbreak is estimated to have pushed down personal consumption by some 31 trillion yen in April, June on an annualized basis for the level projected based on household income and assets. The figure is far larger than 5.5 trillion yen in lost consumption in January, March 2009 due to the global financial crisis and 6.5 trillion yen in January, March 2011 caused by the massive earthquake and tsunami that devastated coastal areas in North Eastern Japan, according to the report, and that was also the huge uh, problem with the, uh, I think it was a nuclear power plant as well, right? So there you have it, um, much larger uh, problem that they're having with deflation. So could we be seeing it here? I think so. But there might be a little bit of inflation um, in the interim in the next year or so uh, before we get to the deflationary future, perhaps. Of course, deflation uh, scares uh, uh, central banks because it makes it very difficult to pay down the debt, of course, right? So that's their real concern. But for uh, for the rest of us, for Joe Public, it really is a, a, a much better uh, deal for us because uh, things become less expensive. So our money that we earn goes further. Now, of course, the corollary is that you don't really get the uh, increase in wages as you do, 
But of course, oftentimes, most often, wages are not increasing, or at least in the recent uh, history, they have not been increasing to match uh, inflation. And so the purchasing power has been decreasing. And this is why we have this bifurcated inequality so far we've seen in society between the haves and the have-nots. The folks who uh, don't have assets, such as stocks or real estate, etc., etc., are unable to uh, screw away much savings because, of course, you can't put your money in your bank. You don't get anything practically for it. And so you earn a, a small wage at the, in, in the first instance. So what money you do earn has to go to uh, feeding yourself and um, uh, buying shelter, etc., etc., clothes, and very little left over. And uh, whereas if you have assets, they can oftentimes and usually do beat inflation. But your wage increases are not beating inflation. So the corollary is that during deflationary periods, not only are goods becoming cheaper, but they're becoming cheaper at a quicker rate than your income is uh, losing power. So in a sense, you're not getting wage increases, um, but you're not really getting wage decreases either. So you're, you're sort of getting ahead of the curve, so to speak. So for us, it's good. For central banks, it's not. And so you can imagine which side I'm on. Obviously, it's the uh, Joe public. All right, let's take a look at the markets. Okay, so uh, a little bit of a red day here. The things are down a little bit. Uh, S&P 500 flirting uh, with a flat 0%. Uh, Nasdaq down uh, just 0.2%, uh, and the Dow Jones just over 2.25% uh, down. Uh, not unexpected after the huge uh, rally so far. Now, I don't know if this is going to end up being a triple um, a triple top, but I think what's going to happen, as I've said before, we're probably going to rally up to about 4,200, 4,500, as David Hunter seems to suggest. I think that's probably not outside the realm of possibility. In fact, I think that's probably a, a base case, potentially. And then uh, come perhaps uh, early next year into spring, potentially, when we really get a sense of things being uh, as disastrous as I think they are, then things will really uh, start heading south, at least on the stock market, as the economy probably starts to bottom. There you go. All right. And gold and silver probably not doing much. Let's have a look. Okay, so gold uh, taking a bit of a, a rally up here now at 1950, but still hitting some resistance there about the 1950 level. We'll see if we can get above that or if it's going to dip silver probably on the move as well. Yep, silver also up, um, but not quite hitting um, resistance yet. That'll probably come in around 26, and right now it's at 25.51 or so. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, silver and gold going to do well in the coming years, I believe, but uh, perhaps not as well as Bitcoin, in my opinion. So let's check the cryptocurrency markets. Wow, this is incredible. So it's continued strength here with the uh, coin market cap up 4.3% in the last 24 hours at $450 billion. Just uh, crazy. Coins 6,016 available for your purchase and pleasure. And Bitcoin uh, losing a little bit of dominance now at 637 But look at this rally. This is incredible. Bitcoin now uh, quite robustly over 15000 heading at uh, fifteen and a half thousand dollars. Ethereum also uh, jumping up at uh, four hundred and forty-two dollars, over four hundred now. And uh, most of the top ten coins, as you can see, Cardano up uh, ten point eight percent at ten cents, and uh, the rest of them doing quite well as well. XRP as well also moved up to twenty-five cents. So really looking bullish. I think we might be in the beginning of this next bull run uh, for cryptocurrencies. As you know, I, I expect uh, Bitcoin to see a hundred thousand dollars by the end of next year 2021 so we'll see if that materializes folks are calling for bitcoin at 20,000 by the end of this year and so at the rate it's going that looks possible as well all right on to the online oracle for today's most pressing question okay so you know we've had some uh, good news here on the job fronts particularly and so uh, i thought you know uh, perhaps my thesis is, is incorrect even though i don't believe it is i think it's just been premature and that um, and next year we'll really start to see uh, what is the disaster that has been unfolding. So I thought I'd ask the online oracle, our April Economist trusty sidekick, is the economy in a bona fide recovery at the moment? And uh, let's see what it says. Most likely. Okay, so it could be I'm out to lunch and uh, perhaps we'll have a quick recovery here and by middle of next year we'll be looking uh, groovy, but I doubt it. But there you go. So there's a uh, an opposite opinion for you and um, you know do with, do with that what you will none of this is financial advice of course just some random dude on the internet trying to make sense of all of this and to try to find his way to a better future for himself and his family um, so thanks for joining me i really appreciate you on this journey and as we try and help each other to uh, to greater things and in the meantime remember to pay down debt uh, screw away some savings good times are coming but uh, probably not as soon as the uh, eight ball economist seems to think 
Anyway, above all else, remember, Dom Spiro, Sparrow.